Hello, Wear Many Hats listeners. It is your host, Mark Robinson, here again. Um, very excited today, actually. Um, the guest that is currently sitting in front of me has some very similar interests to me in relation to the Yucatan Peninsula, Pyramids, Graham Hancock, and also Joe Rogan. So we're going to have a very interesting podcast on this one. I'd like to welcome Matt Stallworthy, who is the Associate Director and Head of Facilities at Wallace Space. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, really, really good. Really good. Great. Right, so the Yucatan, any aliens? Did you see anything? What's going on? <laughs> well, saw, saw, saw lots of stuff. Yeah? Yeah, there's some really cool stuff out there, like... Things you can't quite explain. Yeah. Lots of art that's like, you know, I feel, you know, having watched a lot of Graham Hancock documentaries yeah, yeah, yeah. and there is a lot of things out there that look like yeah, they how, could be how, from an alien civilization yeah, or something. I yeah, don't know. Yeah. Like how, how, did, how did they do that? How did that happen? Who knows? Yeah. These, you're talking about these amazing architectural, brilliant buildings with you know, the way they're placed, you know, to where yeah. the sun comes up, where the moon goes down. Yeah. And the just sheer size of this stuff. How are they doing it? Yeah. How, was how? was the property professional in you looking at them going, I, 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 I don't get it. Well, I, don't, I, yeah, I, I couldn't do that. I, you know, how do I don't they know, do it? No, I don't know how they do it. I know. Honestly, I, don't think, I don't think we could replicate something like that nowadays. I don't think we could, no. No, yeah. I, don't, I mean, the, the, even the, like the pyramid, the Egyptian pyramid, when they talk about how precise it is. The, yeah, the precision. It's crazy, it. it's isn't like, it? It's like, was it like a point degree off true north or something, something like that? Something like that, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, to, to do that by accident. It's just mental. I know, but if they did do it by accident, imagine if you had a time machine and you went back and it was literally just an accident. Well, I mean, that would be crazy, wouldn't it? It'd be disappointing. It would be, it would be. Anyway, to work. Anyway, listen, Matt, sorry, um, listeners, I'm very interested. Check out Graham Hancock, by the way. He's got a very interesting um, Absolutely. series on Netflix. Don't want to promote him too much, but he's got ancient some interesting... Ancient aliens. Yeah, ancient aliens. Um, he's got some interesting interesting thoughts. Um, anyway, Matt, listen, um, absolutely great to have you on the show. Um, Thank you. Apologies for the, for the segue there, but... Um, no, happy I to. I do love all that stuff. Um, look, firstly, t- tell us a little bit about yourself, your career to date. Um, you know, I think you've had some really interesting roles. Mm. And then lead us into, you know, what you're doing now at Wallace Space. and Because that's also a very interesting role in terms of what you guys are doing. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll start from the beginning. And, you know, I left college um, with a place at a university, but decided ultimately university wasn't the yep. way I wanted to go. Yep. Um I'd had enough of education at that point. Yep. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And uh, I thought, let's just get out into the working world and, and see what happens. I did the same thing. So, yep. and I, you know, to be honest, I wouldn't change change that process. For, you know, I've had a, a great time. Yep. Started off just where I worked for a visual merchandising company. I worked for Transport for London, just doing oh, really? sort of general office bits and pieces, right. learning how to work in an office, be around people. Cutting like your that. teeth. Cut my teeth, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Um, eventually round up in uh, working for the Football Association. Yeah, I saw that. I was yeah. very interested in that, actually. <laughs> Which, um, fantastic place. Yeah. Oh, if you're, especially if you're a football nut. Like, yeah, like no, we've, got, we've got another Guna, guys. <laughs> another one. They're everywhere. <laughs> you know, up the Arsenal is what I have to say. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, and that was, that was amazing. I, I, I joined the, the learning, FA learning department. Yeah, uh, where we were working on curating football courses and managing those courses. Yeah, um, uh, for coaching badges, essentially, yeah, yeah, whether yeah. it's you know level one coaching, level two, and that's all like your pro licensing stuff. Absolutely. Like so it yeah, starts yeah. off from like someone who just wants to do it for Sunday League for the yeah. for the son or daughter right. or whatever, um, and then it was all the way up to ex professional players. So that like, we had you know people like Gary Neville, Philip Neville, really all those kinds of people. David Seaman, I worked with. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. Which getting their professional. Coaching Badges. What did you think of um, Mr. Seaman? Loved him. He's a god isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I, do, do you know, I, used to, I, I met him once fishing. A, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a really big fisherman and he used to go fishing where I grew up in a place in North Yorkshire. Yeah. And I bumped into him once on the river. He used to go with his dad. Friendly fella. Really nice guy. Yeah. Really, really nice. He won't remember me, um, but he was a really, really nice guy. I'm talking about 20 years ago, something like that. Yeah, 20, yeah. 25 years. But yeah, lovely chap. I got some tips off him as well, actually. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a good guy. Big fella, a lot bigger than you realise as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's about, about my kind of size. Yeah, yeah, but he's yeah. just really solid, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, quite right. a broad guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Anyway, another segue, I do. <laughs> but no, that was great. And uh, we, we, you know, we started up an initiative as well like, where we wanted to run those courses uh, through schools as well. So getting more children mm. um, involved at the sort of the lower grassroots level and getting them sort of in, excited about not just playing football, but sort of, yeah. you know, coach, getting them involved in the coaching yeah, yeah, help, yeah. You know, with their friends and stuff. Okay. That was a really fun time. I had oh, a great time. I bet, yeah. Um, unfortunately, they, they decided they were relocating the department up to St. George's Park, which was the whole new development that they built oh, yes. uh, for the England squad yeah, yeah, and yeah. all of their sort of professional training stuff that they did. Because that's it, that's in like the Midlands, isn't it? Yes, like, it's in the middle of nowhere, to yeah, be honest. Yeah. <laughs> but Burton-on-Trent. Burton-on-Trent, yeah, But like yeah. when I say Burton-on-Trent, it's in the middle of nowhere in Burton-on-Trent. Right, okay. Uh, you're half an hour from anything. Oh, really? In every direction. It's probably oh. different now. This was quite a while back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, decided not to go mm. my life was in london at that point yeah um so from there i was like oh what do i do i've been doing this football stuff for a bit I, I, you know where, yeah. where do i go and i tried getting into clubs you know tried getting into arsenal did you <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> well, i'll give it a go see, see what i can yeah, yeah, yeah. um wasn't wasn't happening so then at that point i was like well let's, i'll just take whatever i can get at this point yeah yeah um, and got offered a position at the Emirates Airline, yeah. which was just as they were opening it for the 2012 Olympics. Oh, right. So that was a site that was constructed and maintained by Mace Macro, the construction firm. I know Mace, yeah. And, yeah. Um, I know a few people in Mace, actually. Yeah, so Mace was yeah. the construction element. Macro was the sort of facilities management yep. side yep. of it. So I got, I got a position there. It was originally only meant to be like a three-month part-time thing just to help them getting off yeah, the ground yeah. with the Olympics because it was crazy. It was, yeah, I remember. Um, ended up getting offered a full-time position after two weeks. Right. Um, as working within their sort of front of house um, team because I had such an, a vast team to, yeah, to manage. Yeah. I, was, I was doing like assistant manager for front of house at that point. Oh, wow. Did that for about a year and then got approached by the sort of the director of that site Mm. was asked if I wanted to come into the sort of facility side of stuff. Right. Managing the softer contracts. Yeah. Uh, the cleaning, the security. So that, that kind of began your transition this into the my, facilities management This was world. my start. How, how old were you then, if you don't mind me asking? I was 24, 25. Oh, so still quite young then. Still quite young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but what I found was a lot of the people in that industry at the time were way older than I was. Yeah. You know, um you know, well into their thirties. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I never, knew, I didn't know what facilities management was. I was like, for me, <laughs> I'd never heard of it. Really. I don't think anybody does no. until until they until work. you talk about yeah, it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'll give it a go. Yeah. Um, so got like a promoted into that position and started like working on these soft contracts, working yeah. with managing cleaners, yeah. managing security teams, um, yeah. working with like they're all like sort of external. Yeah, yeah, of course. Stuff. So. Um, and then I enjoyed it, like mm. working, with, uh, learning a new skill, working with these people, still managing the front of house element as well. Oh, so you're doing both? You're kind of doing a, was, a yeah, dual role? doing a bit right, of a dual okay, role. Wow. Um, and it was a great time. Like the, the people there were so lovely. You know? it, was, yeah. it, it was quite an exciting place to be. Everything yeah. was different. Yeah. You know, you're working with the public as well. And, yeah. and so then that was my entrance into sort of the health and safety world as well. Right, so having okay. to sort of be able to sort of navigate yeah, the flow of people that, and yeah. you know, there's the risks associated, the risk assessments, yeah, all that kind of stuff. But so even crowd management is is, is yeah. a massive thing that people don't. But like the science behind that is <laughs> amazing. Yeah, you know, it really is amazing. So did you did you touch on any of that? Definitely, and then because of the connection with TFL, who sort mm. of like sponsored this whole thing, it was, yeah, it was Boris Johnson's baby, wasn't it? It was, yeah, car. yeah. Um, they were able to sort of help guide us on right. crowd management and yeah. all of the risk and stuff that is associated with, you know, essentially being another. They looked at it very much then as a mode of transportation. Yes. They wanted it, you know, they were looking at, especially for the Olympics, getting people from the O2 mm. to the Excel Center. Yeah. And back, and back again. Yeah. And then after the Olympics, it was very much, this is a transport thing. We want people to use it to get to yeah, work yeah, and home yeah. from work. Yeah. But it wasn't that at all. It's more of an attraction, I think. It, it, it was an attraction. That's how I sure. view it. Yeah. And the majority, you know, uh, you know, early morning you get a small rush, yeah, and then the rest of the day you look. It's just tourists yeah. coming for for a unique experience, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then so we, they leaned in eventually, leaned into that a lot more, right? Okay. And it became much more, you know, 
you can propose on here. I <laughs> you, really, you know, yeah. Valentine's packages. Yeah. Book your own private cabin for your family for the birthday. And yeah. like, start going down that road, which made it a bit more interesting, a bit more, you know, exciting. Yeah. It was more personal. It was about the customer experience. Yeah, um, more, more client-centric. More, exactly. Yeah, yeah, And that yeah. was okay. kind of the bit of the background I came from. So that yeah, felt yeah. really comfortable to me. Right, okay. Um, and then, obviously, because you're also, it's a cable car. I, wanted, yeah. no, I didn't know anything about cable cars. No, no. So we worked with um, a company called Doppelmeyer, who, right. ran, who run lots of cable cars at ski resorts in Europe right. and America. And, okay. Um, so got to learn a lot about that. Eventually helped with uh, managing that sort of harder sort of service contract as well. Yeah, yeah. So dealing and with the maintenance main, and the, yeah. the upkeep and so on. Absolutely. Very, and like all of this was just like, I was like being fed constantly. Yeah. It's all just new to me. And I was just like, like a sponge. Like just a sponge. Absorbing. Learning, learning, yeah. learning, learning all the time. Mm. Uh, I was, ended up being there for, I think it was like four or five years. Yeah, yeah. Roughly. Um, and it got to that point where I was like, where do I go from here? Yeah. And I didn't know much about, facilities management until that point so i was yeah, like yeah. started looking at my options you know where do i go you know i've worked on this sort of brand new site it's very exciting it's ever changing but and how do i transition how do i transition it? because yeah, I, yeah. you know i wanted a new challenge yeah um and then a really interesting opportunity came up to me to work for a charity right um the society of chemical industry right. give them a big shout because what they do over there is really interesting as well. Um, they well, tell, are, tell us a little bit. Uh, I've, yes. I've, I've never heard of them. So, <laughs> no, yeah. neither have I. So they are a company that do lots of work um, with massive corporations yeah. um, across the scientific sector. Right. Um, doing research into stuff. And like they basically are an organization that brings people together right. to talk about how they can have a, a more – you know, a bigger change on, mm. you know, whether it's environmental yeah. or chemical or, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, I wasn't massively involved in that side of it. No, no, no. Um, no they got me in there to manage their incredible building that they mm. had. Um, but they were doing such great work. And that was kind of like where I first got introduced to sort of event stuff as well. Because right. they had a gigantic auditorium in their basement and they oh, do really? often do like massive lectures and, and things with some really cool people as well. Yeah, where are they located then? Um, so that's in, in Belgrave Square. Right. Um, but they had a grade one listed building yeah. gifted to them by the Queen. I oh, believe. really? The Queen right. was the patron patron of the charity. Right. Um, and the building was incredible. Right. Really yeah. old school so I went in there thinking, oh, really nice. I've got very different to a cable love, car. Very different yeah, to yeah, yeah, opposite yeah. to a cable car. Yeah. And I love my history as well. So yeah. it was like very interesting for me to sort of work somewhere that had a bit of prestige to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So got in there, realized old buildings are a lot of hard work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, nothing straightforward about them. Yeah. Um, we, we have had a few guests on the show that manage, you know, listed buildings. And, and everybody says the same thing. Love the building, love, but it is a very difficult thing to maintain and manage. Yeah. Also because of the legislation surrounding what you can and can't do. Yeah, and yeah. So you on, have yeah. to, if you, yeah, there's, there's very specific mm. things you have to do. You have to get permission yeah. almost to do this stuff. Yeah. And then when you're doing it, it has to... Say you're changing a wall, for example, yeah. a wall that's been there a long time. You have to try and use the same materials. Which is difficult. Which is difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it has to look almost the same as what was there before. Yeah. If you, you know, if it's, and you're talking about if something's like falling away because it's just so old. Yeah. You're having to replicate it with, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. really hard. I bet, yeah. Um, I do like that we do that though. Because if you think about it, if we didn't do it, we, we would eradicate all of our history, you know, like if... Oh, I love that. Yeah, I think I think it's fantastic that, 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 that that's in place to protect those old yeah. buildings and those things that we... I know. think we should do more of it, to, yeah, yeah, in, in yeah. fairness. You know, you see all the stuff that has gone up in the 80s, 90s, yeah, and yeah. it's just like you've got these buildings next to each other that yeah. don't really make sense. No. But no. it's like, I suppose it's a story through time almost. Yeah, I, t I quite like it. I think London's a little bit like a patchwork quilt. <laughs> yeah. I, I do quite like it. I think, it, you know, there's not, I don't think there's really any other city in the world that's quite like it. No. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what street you walk down, you will see every kind of building. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, and, it's and I think that that's, fascinating yeah, you, know, unique, you, and you find like just a, like a hidden gem in the middle of nowhere you know which is really really good absolutely absolutely yeah. so yeah i was i was there for again i was there for a while three three or four years mm. um 
got involved in some really great projects, lots of refurb work because oh, it's cool. an old building. So I had yeah. an opportunity to work on some really interesting projects. Yeah. Um, I think, for example, there was one great project I worked on, which was they had this out, amazing little outdoor space that you just wouldn't know they, that was there. Yeah. And um, it was a dump when, oh, I, really? when I got there. And uh, the director, Sharon, she um, was very keen to turn that space into a, a, a garden. Right. But a, like a, a science-inspired garden with, science, like with the, all the plants sort of – reflecting different industries within science oh really and so she had a very clear design on her head yeah and i just helped her bring that to fruition and like really yeah and i hope it's still there yeah <laughs> I, I haven't been back for a while but um yeah yeah it was a great space and people were you you know when we got it done people were using it and yeah do, you know parties out there and stuff like that so it was, it was really cool and that like, you oh, get like lovely. school groups coming to look at all the yeah yeah, all yeah. The different plants and flowers that were growing and oh wow was yeah. it quite a big space then it wasn't massive mm. it was i say you know probably double the size of this room yeah but you can get a lot in there you can get a yeah, lot yeah, in there yeah yeah, 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 yeah for yeah, sure yeah. but it had like three massive trees in it oh really yeah yeah and then obviously with tree one of the trees was sort of dead yeah and if you cut here's a whole thing about cutting down trees yes in London, so if you, yeah. you have to replace yeah another and all that kind of stuff so that was an interesting thing to learn as well so really? going through that process and so did you have to plant another tree when you took the, the dead tree we had to plant another two. Oh, really yeah they made us so we got the permission to get it out because it was it was the roots were rotting it would be and, dangerous wouldn't and it? it was a, a danger and it was yeah. causing um damage to the actual building the foundations and so on yeah 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 so they were fine for us to take it out and got that permission but then they were like in place of that you have to plant another two trees on the site so we did that but i think it's you know hopefully they're still babies probably yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but yeah that's that loved working there again but then you know at that point then i was like where do i go from here yeah what do i do now (laughs) what do i do now you know i'm a facilities manager in this you know really cool space but where you know i felt at that point i was like very relaxed mm. and I like to always be sort of pushed and I was like I'd love to, you know it'd be great if I could manage another site or something yeah, like that yeah, yeah. Like just so I could expand my experience to have another challenge yeah um, and then this is when the whole Wallace Space um, opportunity um, came to me um, yeah and Wallace Space are an events company mm. um, that based in central London, mm. five sites across central London. Yeah. Um, and they basically put together these really beautiful spaces. Yeah, they are cool. I've, yeah. I've had a look. They are cool. Uh, for people to come to, to use them for whether it's workspace, yeah. meetings, you know, whether it's boardroom, workshops, training days. Um, you know, they've been known to do fashion events oh really music events and so like a bit of everything really right uh but the bread and butter is the sort of the meeting yeah the, meeting the, space the core like working that. spaces and things like that yeah exactly yeah. um and so i came on board there started off as just the head of head of facilities in it yeah um and wow what a whirlwind journey since yeah. again yeah it's Managing multiple sites is obviously it's a challenge. Yeah, of you course. Have to yeah. Have, I think some very key skills to be able to sort of manage that and flex that and stuff like well, that. You're not you're not just dealing with the buildings; you're dealing with different people, different um, people, which is always complex. Um, yeah. so different teams in the buildings, yeah. different landlords who own those buildings. Yeah. Um, all the different, you know, challenges that each any individual building will present to you. Yep. Yeah. Um, but a great challenge. I loved it. Yeah. Um, and then COVID came. Oh no! <laughs> like six months after I started, um, pandemic came and closed down everything. Oh, God, so like complete, complete, um, pulled the reins on us. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We weren't able to do anything for for a while. Yeah, got furloughed. Yeah, um, and I can actually see the pain in your face. Yeah, it was, the, 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 you were, the, it was so exciting it. as well because yeah. we were just at that point of expansion. We were. Oh. I came in at a really exciting time where yeah, we were yeah. planning to open up. We'd almost signed on the dotted line uh, for a new space. Right. Luckily pulled the plug in it I yeah. think two days before the lockdown was announced because Ooh. we didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah, of course. Um, and all the work that had gone into that, you know, all that exciting work, is the, it was going to be the biggest yeah. space Wallace Space had taken on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, so it was a real shame. And oh. from then, you know, it's been... Recovery, yeah. recovery, recovery, getting yeah, those yeah. clients back in, yeah. trying to really deliver the brand yeah. and the 
all of that to, yeah. to clients to get, you know, a lot of companies, the whole market's changed, hasn't it? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> wow. So wow. Yeah. I, I think that's a whole other conversation that we can go into on the market if you, yeah. we can go down that road. But yeah. But it's, it's been it's been a, it's been a journey, and like mm. with that, you know, come you know, te- people leaving, people come, you know, recruitment's been an absolute nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we got there, and we're headed in the right direction. Everything's really positive at the moment. Yeah. Um, was promoted to associate director. A few Congratulations! Months ago. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's good to hear. So it's like just getting that recollection. The yeah the the note the note then recognizing yeah the. All the hard work that's gone into sort of getting things back and running has been really, really nice. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, it's yeah. always nice to get that pat on the back, the recognition that you've done a good job. Yeah. Um, but, but I mean, I mean, you know, on top of all of that, you've obviously done a good job to get to that position anyway. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. so it's, it's clearly deserved, which is which is the main thing. Um, so what, what advice would you give um, to, you know, because you were quite young, really, when you, when you broke into facilities management, whether it yeah. was by accident or not. Um, you know, what advice would you give to young professionals looking to to either break into it or carve out a career? How 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 would you say because the market's changed, it's very different now to yeah, it's very different. to when you started. Um, you know, what advice would you give to young people out there that were I think I think there's always gonna be a need for it mm. because managing a building is just a, a huge, enormous task. So I think it's definitely still a market for this kind of role. Yes. Um, although I do feel that the role has definitely changed. You have to consider all of the hybrid elements of stuff. That's, that's interesting. That's come in now. And I think tech has been a, a massive addition to what I do now. We're going to get on to Which we'll come yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, f- I would say you have to go out there and yeah. be ready to get your hands dirty. Yeah. You know, I've I learned everything the hard way. Um, you've got to go, you, you know, you've got to be able to be, be prepared to stick your hand down the toilet, yeah. get into a drain, yeah. come face to face with a rat. <laughs> um, my wife would go mental. Yeah. Um, and just like uh, my advice would be, I, you know, I don't know if there is anything on the school curriculum that leans into this at the moment. I think there should be because I think it's a definite career path. I agree. Yeah. Um, but I'd say go out there. And start at the bottom and work your way up. Learn because yeah. that's the best way you're going to get that experience and that knowledge. And that's yeah. what I have done. It's just you know, if I could go back and do it again, I would have started earlier. Really? Yeah, definitely. Oh wow! Definitely because I think you learn every day. Even now, I'm still like, there's things I come up against. I'm like, Jesus, I didn't yeah. Know it. you know. And you learn it. So it's a continuous learning curve. I think that's the great thing about our industry, though, because there are there are so many different elements to it. Um, all, uh, you know, you go back to the fact that you walk down a street in London and every building's different. Yeah, they've all got different needs, and they've all got you know, literally there isn't there isn't a carbon copy really of any building. Absolutely, you know, there's diff- there, there's similar structures with you know you know like high you know flux of individuals and things like, that, but they're they're all different. Yeah, so each one has you know its own. I don't know what's the word? What, what word am I thinking of? Um, Eccentricities. That's yeah. It. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great oh, word. That's a good word. Isn't Great it? word. Oh, Eccentric, eccentric buildings in central London. Yeah. Okay. I think a podcast in there. <laughs> <laughs> a good conversational point. Yeah. But I think you've got to be organised. You've got to be just got. To, I think you've got to know, be able to use all these tools that are out there now. Have yeah. an understanding of the tech that's going, that's happening, and sort of have your finger on the pulse a bit with all the changes that are coming, yeah. but also be prepared to just really learn. Right. And it is a lot of, some of it, sometimes it's just a lot of information, whether it's like learning health and safety legislation and all that kind of stuff. Um, and get yourself a mentor. Like, ah, yes. I think that's a really good thing. If you know someone who is in that industry, or if you don't, like reach out and have a look and see who's there. Mm. And, so, you know, you know, I'd be happy if you know, a student or someone young just wanted to pick my brain really a little bit. I'd be happy to pass on any kind of advice on those because it is hard to navigate when you don't yeah. really know. Yeah, agreed. I've been lucky to have a couple of people in my career who have definitely helped guide me on right. that path yeah. of them who, you know, when they, you know, from their experiences. Yeah. Um, but I think that having that 
sort of mentor kind of person, like consistent mentor. Might, yeah, yeah, might be yeah. A really positive thing. I don't know if there's any way. Well, look, I mean, if anybody's listening um, to, to the episode and you want to reach out to Matt, you can either do yeah. so on LinkedIn or contact us, and you know, we'll put you in contact with Matt, and and you know, maybe, maybe you might get a. Um, an apprentice. You yeah, know, that'd be like, great. You'd be like a Jedi knight. Like. <laughs> Maybe. You're, we do you're, do work experience. Uh, you're, you're on Padawan. <laughs> I'd be happy with that. I love Star Wars as well. I so. do as well. Yeah, yeah, as you can probably tell. Yeah, I'm a typical 80s blank, me, I tell you. Star oh. Wars, Star Trek, all that stuff. Love it. great. Okay, so um, let's let's move on to technology because obviously, you know, you discussed that previously. You know, we've discussed a number of things on the podcast in relation to AI, the internet of things, um, how technology has changed the industry. Changed the industry. Um, it's changed it significantly in the years that I've been in it. Um, you know, the internet was a massive thing. Smart buildings was a, a huge talking point for a period of time. Um, and me personally, I, I feel like AI is just going to push that forward further. Yeah. I just think it's going to be a lot quicker yeah. than, than the internet. You know, the internet was quite steady. I think AI is going to, machine learning is just going to completely blow away anything we've ever seen before. That's my opinion. What's yours? It's definitely something that I find very interesting. I'm yeah. trying to get my head around it. Yep. Yeah. I've been to quite a few conferences recently where they talk about AI. I just, because I don't think we fully realize or understand just yet how it really is going to affect yeah. and impact the industry. And yeah. I mean that generally for every industry. No, I agree. And I think we have to take it with caution because I think if we rush into something, then there's no going back. But I think we have to do things in a very measured way with AI. Yeah. Um, and I don't think AI is here to replace people. Nice. necessarily because I think you can never devalue that human connection and I think that's especially important especially in the business that I'm in you know yeah, working yeah. in these buildings we want people to still come and, and get together in person and and meet up and we're, we're social beings I, 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 if you take that connection away from people yeah um you know mental health becomes an issue absolutely you know loneliness becomes an issue we, we need that interaction as yeah. people i mean look we you know we evolved around a campfire telling stories didn't we exactly you know and what i always say about the podcast is it i like it to have a beginning a middle and an end yeah because that's how human beings psychologically it's how we're geared yeah it's what we want you know our the wallace space owners were an article called it social capital right and i think that's a really nice way of putting it because it yeah. is, it's vital and it's like yeah. you know you come to work and it's not just about working with people it's having that social element and yeah that, yeah because you know, sometimes yeah. that's where the best ideas come from yeah when yeah you go down the pub after work and have yeah. a chat a bit of banter yeah. you know it's, oh, it's like this great idea and you might not want to say it in front of a room of people <laughs> but you might say it to a colleague in the old way or, yeah you know things like that but i think ai at the moment um there's some really great sort of tools out there like tome uh, who which is sort of around sort of powerpoint e presentation sort of they do that in a really nice way so it's, right. like, it's like a more zipped up power PowerPoint. Oh, really? I can... work have a go at it, tome you basically tome, t-o-m-e t-o-m-e yeah yeah i'm gonna check that out check that out that it's... might help me with work so i'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna it's, it's for people, if it's, it really does take the time out of really? slaving over your you know your design of your slides sometimes oh, really? it just gives it to you and it's like it takes that I hate design. Like when it comes, I just want the content. Put the yeah, content I'm in. Yeah, same. Yeah, this does it. Does the design for you? So I really play with it. It's really interesting. I will. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna note that in my <laughs> phone right now. Um, and then I think AI currently is really quite good at the sort of the content creation as well around like the wording of things. Yeah. So for those kinds of people who who maybe struggle to put words onto paper. Um, kind of know roughly what they want to say. Obviously, yeah. things like ChatGPT and Bard, yeah. you know, you throw in your idea and mm. say, hey, you can make, can you make this sound like a bit of a proposal? Yeah. It gives something back to you. Yeah. Yes, okay. At that point, it's giving you probably some really great ideas. It's giving you some really good word craft. Yeah. Um, but I feel like you still need to throw that human element onto it still got to a edit it. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, I know there's yeah. lots of people who I know who are going, oh, it's brilliant. I just, I've done my, done my uh, appraisal on this thing. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, but you sound, it sounds all wrong. It sounds yeah. like, a, like a robot's done it. No, it does, yeah. So you need to like go through it and like pull out the good bits from it and make yeah. it sound more like yourself. And I think yeah. that's that's where AI, I think, is going to be the best. Yeah. Is when you're just, when you're using it to enhance something, yeah. you don't use it to like take over completely what you're doing. Yes. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, so there has to be some kind of, you know, management of AI. Yeah. Um, I feel that there will be 
some development in the way in which buildings are run around with AI, yeah. building management systems and yeah. things like that. I've yet to see what that looks like. Yeah. Um, but all of oh, the they'll, ESG they'll, stuff. Yeah, like they'll, 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 there'll be a new BMS released, I think, within about two months. Based <laughs> around I, Probably. Because I found that really interesting. Like I literally saw, I remember, I mean, look, if you look at AI, chat GPT and things like that, what is it, a couple of months, four or five months, something yeah. like that's been out. Um, I think after it was released, I saw multiple pitches on the likes of LinkedIn and things like that from people who have suddenly created businesses yeah. that are centered around AI. And I'm like, well, how? How have you done that? You know, because yeah. to me, it's just that to me just feels like a bit too quick. You know, well, I think I'm not saying it doesn't work. It might work. It might work, but yeah, I think it's but, too soon to say yeah. it will or won't. I think, yeah. it, that, and it will come out in the wash. Yeah, um, I definitely think that will happen. I think there's so many of these AI companies popping up. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd be surprised if you know at least half of them don't disappear very soon. Yeah, because yeah. and it's always you know it's continually changing. It's continually developing and like. You know, they've got to be on the pulse wow, constantly. God, yeah, it's like yeah. just every day is different. And like you look at things that, like Bard, you know, they just released something else recently, yeah. like an update. And it's like, oh, it changes. it's just continually changing yeah. the game. And I don't know Bard, actually. What's Bard, Bard is the the Google oh. one. That's, so I actually am, have been using Bard now instead of using Google. Oh, really? So I give it a go. Recommend yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, we'll do. It, it just... And I think they're sort of trying to sort of suggest that that's where it's going. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Google just became barred in oh, the next really? year or so. What's it like the brand Google? Is it similar to what Facebook are trying to do with Meta? Yeah, exactly. Oh, really? Right, okay. But it's, it's, it's called Google Bard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, instead of, like, you throwing something in and it giving you just loads of different links, Yeah, it gives you a bit more of a story behind it. And it's oh, like, really? Yeah, and then it sort of pulls in links. So, I don't know, say you go... Oh, I'm looking for meeting space in London. Yeah. Rather than just going, pulling up all these different links to places, and obviously some of them are based upon, you know, what whoever someone's paid to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put yeah. their stuff into Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll actually say, you know, the, be, be, be more precise with the question. Send me some of the best links for the best venues in London to host a meeting or something. Oh, really? And then it'll actually pull up right. based upon like your reviews and all that kind of stuff. It'll pull in who they recommend. Right, right. Oh, and one of space is in there. So is it really? Oh, well, there we go then. So it's great. So, I like how you plug that. Yeah, like that, Matt. well done. <laughs> good, good interjection. <laughs> yeah, well, it, and it's it's just interesting. I think it's just one of those things that we're just going to have to sort of wait and see. Yeah, I wouldn't like overuse it until we know more. Pers- yeah. personally. Yeah. Um, but definitely one to keep a very very close eye on. And, you know, if there's anyone who doesn't know anything about it, go out and go get to those conferences because they've, yeah. they've been really helpful. Have they, really? Yeah. Well, there was yeah, one, there was a really good one at the um, place in Ange- Islington, the, what's it called, the design? Um, I'm not sure. It's like an exhibition centre in Islington, I can't remember right, what it's okay. called. That's um, fine. But they did a really good AI thing like about a month ago. Did they? Yeah. Was that like a, uh, a an exhibition then? Was it was an exhibition. It was like a small conference. It's like, oh, right. mor- it like a morning thing. Come in, right. have, have a coffee and some yeah, breakfast. Yeah, and yeah. then there was a bit of a talk with uh, four or five different guys. Right. They're just sort of debate from different sectors. Yeah, yeah, How yeah. they're using it, what they recommend and all right, that kind of stuff. Okay. And, you know, some of these people are like traveling across the world and sort of like sort of getting the experiences of how, how is America using it, how is Europe using it. And like right, everyone's right. a bit different. So it was, yeah, it was yeah. really interesting. And, um, you can just go, you know, go on LinkedIn. Yeah, have a bit of a search, and you'll you'll find people talking about it. Okay, yeah, yeah, I will do. Yeah. Some great articles. That's really really cool. All right, then. So move, moving away from AI, let's talk a little bit about ESG. Um, you know, I say this all the time on the show, but I think our industry is pretty good at from an ESG perspective. I don't, I don't think we're perfect. I don't think we're there yet. Um, but I think in terms of the industry as the whole, whether it's um, you know clients directly or managing agents or contractors or whatever i think the industry in a whole has, has really embraced it and and does a pretty good job what are your thoughts and where do you see it going as well yeah bad question Matt. um i've actually had a bit more of a negative experience oh go on ESG. Then. Yeah. so obviously i think it's important and it's something that we need to all be thinking about um you know the impact of of that on 
whether it's your clients or your your, your people working in, yeah, in yeah, your yeah. teams in the building is so important yeah. um, to make sure that their well-being and, you know, just general sustainability and yeah, like yeah, the environments yeah. they're working in, all yeah. that really, you know. Like that place in Mexico. Like that place in Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Google that. Yeah, tonight. Google it. <laughs> Hol- Holbosch. Holbosch, sus- yeah. Sustainable island. Yeah, or yeah. trying to be anyway. Yeah. So, I, you know, with buildings, we got some really old buildings. On our estate at the moment, we've got a couple of old buildings and need a lot of work yeah. to, to sort of invest in in that area, which obviously costs money. Yeah, yeah. I suppose let's talk about net the net. Zero, yeah, zero. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, by 2050, we're just not seeing, you know, we, we lease our buildings. So, yeah. we're, you know, we're, we are working with our land, with the landlords to try and keep these buildings as environmentally friendly as they can be, sustainable mm-hmm. and everything for the future. Yeah. We're finding it really tough with landlords. Really? They're not interested. The, what These landlords, I, I'm not yeah. going to name the shame, but. Oh, no, of course not. No, um, no, no, no. But, um, not interested. It's, it's a really tough, to, you know, conversation because you're talking about like the future of like you know extending leases and all that kind of stuff and going down that road. And they just they they don't want to throw any cash at it. They expect us to do it. And it's like, hang on a second. Yes, yeah, we're happy to invest in it, but right, it's your building. <laughs> you yeah. own it. Like yeah. surely there should be some interest into you know putting some solar panel paneling in to you know get rid of gas boilers and, and yeah, things like yeah, that yeah. or you know um do you think that perhaps could be maybe a covid hangover is or, or uh, a, a financial decision or a bit of a weariness about investment at the minute potentially or do you just think it's i think i, I think wholesale it's, across the board <laughs> because we're having the same problem across the board yeah it could be something it could be covid hangover and it could be like they're just they're, i mean i don't know because i don't deal with landlords <laughs> Matt, so so I'm, I'm just throwing out but that's being a, all, all i can say about covid landlords and stuff that is is that we we paid had to, we had to pay our right our rents across yeah. that period even though we were not taking in ah uh, okay any money and yes some of the landlords came to the table and helped us out and yeah yeah, just, yeah. you know all that kind of stuff but you'd think you know, I don't think the the landlords have been massively hit by COVID because they're still making people pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think what's happening now is is they're probably being precautionary because lots of businesses are trying to well getting out of their leases. Yeah. Once the lease runs down or trying to get out early. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, if you're doing that, come to Wallace Space. We'll happily have you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and. Um, I think there's a caution there, maybe because yeah. because that's happening. Like, oh well, we're not going to like massively invest in the building because we don't know what you know all these tenants are going to do yeah, in yeah. the next five years, right? Um, so it could be that, but I just feel like you know, I feel like the government aren't doing enough about it as well right. with, with the net fifth, net zero thing in particular because they well, they've wheeled back a bit on they've some, wheeled back, some, yeah, 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 massively wheeled back, and I don't think there's. You know, it's going to be that thing where it comes to like you know a few years before, you know, twenty thirty. Yeah. Um, and they're going to go right. Everyone has to do this. Yeah, they're going to put in some legislation. They're going to put in some, le- some legislation. Cost everyone cost a fortune. Everyone yeah. a fortune, exactly. And yeah. um, they won't have like what they should do is is they should go out to businesses and get some thoughts and ideas from the people on the floor, and have conversations with us. Yeah. To see what is the best way to do this because it's going to cost a bomb either way mm. so whether or not they're helping to fund part of part of these changes to make these yeah. buildings more sustainable um and more you know you know looking at the footprint yeah yeah of, yeah. of the building and stuff to, to help out because by doing it too late you're going to probably kill off a load of businesses if, if you're making it a legal requirement that they yes. have to have x y and z in by yeah. a certain day no boilers no no air conditioning you know i mean i mean all that stuff it's yeah. like you can't just throw that at someone no. you need that that needs forward planning like mm. probably over at least 10 year period easily um, easily and yeah i just i just feel like there's because the government are being very hard line about it at the moment, it's all quite wishy washy. Yeah. There's no legislation. I think the landlords are going, well, you know, there's nothing out there yet, so we don't really need to say anything much about it. Um, but so for businesses like ours who are trying to plan ahead and like we what we strive to be a bit more, 
you know greener and all that and we want our buildings to to, to run better and yeah you know because essentially if you do that as well it's, it will eventually be a cost saving i imagine yeah for those businesses then um it's a win-win for everyone yeah of course yeah. You're, you're, you're sort of protecting the building as well for yeah. for another future, future excellent generation, future generation. Yeah. Do, do you think potentially technology is not quite where it needs to be at the minute so the government i don't i mean i'm not in the government but because the technology isn't necessarily there to fix all the issues right now, they don't know what to mandate. Maybe, possibly, yeah, that could be it as well. well know, because you know. sol- solar panels, especially in the UK, I, n- I know that they're better than they were ten years ago. Yeah, but they still don't generate enough energy to, you know, it's it's not going to be a cool, you know, a cool power station of producing electricity at the minute. Yeah, you know, so maybe, is, is is there potentially a? There is some know. there is some stuff yeah. out there at the moment. I think there probably is. There will be a lot of work and development over the yeah. next sort of five, ten years to make that better, yeah. which is probably why people are going hold off because yeah, there might be yeah, something, yeah. you know. And okay. I think that, but that thing with that is that will happen, and then in five, ten years later, there'll be another thing, and then yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's going to be continuously changing. Yeah. But what's interesting is um, I went to something at the Design Museum earlier mm. this year, and their build they've had they did like a massive refurb of their building, like mm. millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. Or pounds, sorry. Well, I don't know what's in dollars. It's because I've just been in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> still, still in dollars, yeah. very mind. Yeah. Um, and they're doing this thing where they've used all this tech where, I don't know if you've heard about it, where they're conserving energy yeah. from the, the national grid that they're not, actually using at certain times mm. they can serve it so when they want to use it they can use it something really? weird like that i don't know loads about well, it i'm the, looking the, into it the but. biggest issue is wastage yeah we, we lose more we lose more of the power than we generate than we yeah. use so if, i think it's way over 50 percent is lost in transmission down the lines and blah blah, blah. so this is exactly it so they're using you trying to utilize that wastage Ooh. and store it oh so that when it they want to use or need to use it. They're, they're used basically by doing that. They're using less energy, right? So they're like massively saving on yeah. electric bills and all that kind of stuff, right? It's really interesting. I, I'd like. I'm. That's something I've been literally looking into today. Well, I find, yeah. When you find out about that, let me know. I'll let you know. I'm interested in all that stuff as well. Yeah, it's, it's like it's kind of nerdy stuff. But, yeah, yeah, I like um, all that stuff. But you know, I think it's gonna. If, if you can, you know, bills at the moment. Uh, oh God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't look, I've got three kids, so um, cost me a fortune. Yeah, yeah, so all that kind of stuff. If you can save money, mm. you know, especially as a, a business in London, yeah, you know, then you, you need to look into it. But I know that, that costs them a lot of money to get that kind of equipment really? installed and all that kind of stuff. But, right. Okay. Um, Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Interesting stuff. And what about the social element? Wellness of. Yeah, it, it's important. Mm. It's you know you you got to look at your your people are your assets. Yeah. really mm. in the grand grand scheme of it. Yes, you got your building, and yes, it needs to. That's why I think the big change has been in business in the last twenty years. That that's the bit from when I started in the workforce to where it is over the last two or three years. Mm. That to me has been. I know we all talk about the environment, and you know we all. But to me, in terms of the working life, mm. that has been the biggest change. I think with the hybrid working, stuff. well, the, the, just the hybrid working. How companies view, you people. know, people as you know, it used to be assets, numbers, mm. you know, someone on a balance sheet. It, mm. it used to be that, whereas now it is more about that social element, the, the individual, the person, and the needs of the person. Absolutely, and I think yeah. all that kind of stuff around mental health has been yeah. like that's so vital. What a big change, and like yeah. um, that's so important because you just don't know what. An right. individual is thinking, but now there's so many measures in place, especially, you know, we do it at Wallace Space. Yeah. I know lots of other businesses do it as well, mm. where they're, you know, they actually care about the individual and it's yeah. like, what can we do to yeah. help you? And, you know, you're looking at, you know, whether it's, you know, diversity as well, like yeah. understanding diversity, yeah, yeah, um, all that kind of stuff. And it's, you know, those kind of things, they're not easy. And it's, it's always going to be a learning curve for any business. And I feel like, you just got to speak to the people and get yeah. their input. And yeah, the, I mean, to, to, to me, it's a it's a it's a square peg round hole scenario. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, um, we're all different. Yeah. So because we all experience the world differently, we all experience you know anybody who experiences mental health, every individual um, would experience that differently. So, similar to you know, equality, diversity, you know. 
so finding you can't there's no one solution that mm. fits everything in in that in Absolutely that space not. so I, I i just think it's something that's, it's, it's got to be a continuation you can't have blanket policies that that cover everything because there's going to be scenarios that pop up that just don't fit within mm. that scenario so i you know, I, I think it's, it's quite I, i'm i'm observing it I, I find it very interesting you know especially you know like how come because there's certain companies that you know that were around 20 years ago yeah. that you either worked for or so. Do you know what I mean? And you're like, then you see them doing certain things and you're like, oh, really? Yeah, that, that wasn't my experience. And it's good. To, hopefully it's changed and I'm, you know, it'd be good to see that it has. But. Yeah, well, I think they have to. Mm. I think people wouldn't stand for it anymore. And I think, pe- no. I think there's a whole thing with like when someone's looking for a job nowadays, um, they look at that. Yeah, that's that's something that's of value to them. It is it's extreme, important, yeah. and yeah. I think you know people would probably leave a job if they weren't if there weren't any positive changes yeah, in that yeah. area. And you know, I think that's so it, it, it's of value to a company to to invest time mm. and effort and care into that sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing. And you know, and with the whole you know hybrid working because you know that's came about because of the pandemic and everything. Yeah, yeah, it did. More people working from home. You know, my 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 partner, she she works from home, you know, four days oh, really? three, four days a week. Right. Um I'm in the office every day. I'm lucky if I get a working from home day yeah, you're, once a month. You're, you're, you're FM. You're FM, you know you, yeah. you, you can't be you gotta be ever present. Um, you're the front line. I know, exactly. <laughs> but you know, there's benefits and I think there's also disadvantages to, to, to pure hybrid working you know? yeah and i think it is around that social element you yeah know? you've got to come into the office because i think one you, you get to have that social act, you know key social activity yeah. with your peers your teams Agreed. all that kind of stuff and i think you do you know there's only so much talking for a screen effective talking for a screen that you're gonna you're gonna yeah. get you know and we you know we we have cameras systems yes. and all that kind of stuff we do all that we cater to hybrid meetings and yep. things like that and you have to and there's a lot of you know investment in that area because you have you know someone yeah, can yeah. just come in and expect it these days of course they do yeah. um yeah. so that is important but there is nothing quite like the social connection of being in front of a person mm. being in the same room writing on the same flip chart and all that kind of stuff and yeah and getting together and you know I see my partner sometimes struggle with that because she doesn't go in the office as much as she yeah. as she probably would like to. Yeah. But her office is, isn't set up for, for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to book a desk. Well, okay, I'll book a desk. Well, yeah. There's nothing available. It's right. okay, I'll, I'll book it for two weeks' time. Well, there's yeah. nothing available. And it's like, how wow. are you expected to... Yeah. So there are definitely things that other businesses should be doing to make sure that they're not sort of purely keeping people at an arm's length you know so, so it's, another, it's another scenario where it's a bit trying to get that balance right um it's it's going to be such an interesting five years it's a it? tightrope isn't it it's yeah like... I've, I've really I've, i think the next five years are going to, just going to be you know there's going to be so much so much change i think in terms of how we work how we don't work yeah what does work and what doesn't work yeah um you know it's it's gonna be i think it's i'm quite looking for i think it's gonna be the most interesting five years of my career it's gonna be a hell of a ride isn't it, it is <laughs> without a doubt you know and then we throw ai into the mix and we're off yeah. we're off to the races yeah. aren't we matt to be fair. absolutely okay well listen um i, th- I mean we're, we're coming to the end of the podcast now okay. but you know tell us you know what things in life whether it's work leisure um give you the greatest satisfaction and enjoyment Work-wise, mm. the people. Yeah, you know, I ha- I've I, I've got a great team. Um, it's taken a while to recruit a great team. You know, through the pandemic, we lost people who went. You know, ended up going back home to yeah. their home countries or finding other jobs yeah. or whatever and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And Brexit as well. Bre- you know, there was, there was two kind of things that contributed to that. Yeah, wasn't absolutely. There? Yeah. So, and it has taken a, a while. I think coming out of the pandemic, yeah. recruitment was wild. It oh was yeah, it was just crazy. And you know, people were just there's people everywhere, everywhere. Yeah, uh, really I think good that's people. massively calmed down. Now. Yeah, yeah. It was really seeing some really great candidates come through. You know, we just mm. took on a couple of new people, and you know, right. really, really great. So I think. The team for me at work is so important. It's yeah. really important to me about you know their progression, their welfare, yeah. and just the interaction with them. I think that's where I find the most value in my day. Right. Okay. Um, outside of work, what do I like? You know, I like 
you know, going on holiday, traveling, yeah, yeah, traveling going yeah. to new places. Um, yeah. Definitely um, football. Yeah. You know, Arsenal, we've already spoke about it. Um, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a big music person as well. I, I, oh, right, okay. I, I play um, in a band. Oh, really? I write my own music. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What type, what type of music? It's, I guess it's like rock and roll, indie oh, right. rock and roll kind oh, yeah. of vibe. Bit of Brit pop. I suppose some people have said there's a bit of Brit pop in there. Yeah. So I'm influenced by all sorts of. What bands things. do you like? Um, I'm massively into Arctic Monkeys. I love the Arctic Monkeys. Um, yeah. um, Big Beatles fan. Same. Yeah. So um, all of that. Well, you Tame- have to be a Beatles fan, don't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tame Impala. Yeah, I don't know them actually. Uh, oh, they're a really cool Australian bands. Right. Um, yeah, that, those kinds of bands. But I, I just love all music. Honestly, right. I, I was brought up. You know, my mum and my dad just massive music people. Really, like the different stuff. But I just like my young, my favorite memories of growing up are just like my mum playing records at home and oh, really? just like dancing around, you know, to Queen and Fleetwood yeah, Mac yeah, yeah, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. I and, do love a bit of Fleetwood Mac. Actually. You know, yeah. so that, I've just been brought up on that. So like, yeah. I love all types of music. So, so what instrument do you play? I play guitar. Yeah, just lead singer. Singer? Lead singer. Lead as singer as well. well. Yeah. Right. Okay. So do you, do you do any gigs? Or? We do. We did one last month actually, which yeah. was really really fun. Over from Brick Lane. How did um, it go? Yeah, it's good. We had a really good good turnout. Yeah. Um, we had a... My friends are in a group who live in Amsterdam. Right. And they came over to play um, with us, which was yeah. really, really fun. Um, yeah, great time. Like, we just... Oh, brilliant. It's just one of those things, you know, at, at one stage in my life, it's something I did quite a lot. Yeah. And it was like, you know, regular, like, you know, two, three times a week. It'll be... I'd be doing something in the evening, really? music based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, as I've got a bit older, it's become a bit more of a hobby. So um, instead of playing golf or something like that, you go out and play, <laughs> play, play, play music. Get in a room, get yeah, in the studio, yeah. and like jam out. You know, write a lot of stuff on my own. But like, oh, yeah, cool. love to get in a room with the gang and like yeah. hash up some ideas, and then get on a stage and, and yeah. do it in front of our friends, fans. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah. All that kind of stuff. It's really, really been fun. So, have you recorded anything? Or? Yeah, we've got an yeah. album on Spotify. Have you? Um, currently writing. You're gonna have to let us have a listen then. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Or, 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 or or disco lizards. This. Disco lizards. Yeah. Right. Okay. So. Oh, cool. Love yeah. that. Love food as well. Love, yeah. love. So do I, as you can probably tell. <laughs> Me too. Um, <laughs> I call this my COVID belly. You know what I mean? That's what, that's what it's going to go eventually, you know? But just all the usual stuff, and just hanging out with friends, family, yeah. you know, spending time with my partner, and like just all that all that good stuff. Yeah. Love a good series as well. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, yeah I love sitting it. on the sofa and just like binging a, yeah. binging a series. What are you watching at the minute? Uh, what have we been watching recently? Um I think of what we just finished. We watched The Last of Us. That was good, wasn't it? Which was which was real that good. Was um, I loved that. Um, Walking Dead. Oh, I love that as well. So, Have you watched the new Daryl series? No, so that's, that's that is this mid. weekend. Oh, really good. You're going to enjoy that. Yeah. Do you know what else I've just started watching? What's that? Um, it's a little bit hard to get into, but if you like your aliens and all that stuff. On Apple, there's something called Invasion. I've seen it advertised. Yeah. Yeah, so, any good? Get through the first three episodes. Okay. Right, it's one of them. Do you yeah. know what I mean? If you can get through the first three episodes, bang on. Okay. It's really, really good. But you've got to get through those first three, those first three episodes. But to be fair, that could just be me because I couldn't get through the first three episodes of The Walking Dead. Oh, and right. then one day, just randomly, I started watching it and then I was off watching all nine or ten seasons. It what, could just be me. <laughs> what would you say the best series you've ever watched is? The best series I've ever watched? Yeah. In my really time. hard question. Oh, do you know what? I loved Game of Thrones. Did you? Yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't mind it. It wasn't yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. It was. It was. It was the. Um, I, I liked. I, I think. I just. I liked the. Um, I liked the. You know, the zombie army and all that in it. I, yeah. I, th- I think it was kind of that. Um, that that I probably got into. <laughs> um, oh wow! But that's it. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right then. Oh, Breaking Bad. I quite like that too. I preferred Better Call Saul than Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad's yeah. amazing, but yeah. have you watched Better Call Saul? I haven't, no. Okay, so that's it's all about Saul Goodman, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Good character in Breaking Bad. Listen, yeah. I think it's even better than Breaking Bad, honestly. Well, I'll I, tell you what, I, he's got about nine seasons. That could be my next obsession. Yeah. So we'll do that. Get stuck in. Yeah, yeah, Enjoy. yeah. Enjoy. I will do. All right, Matt. Well, listen, thank you very much for joining us on Wear Many Hats today. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, I had a great time. Thanks for having me, lads. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, you know, as Matt said, you know, if there's anybody out there that's listening to the show that's looking for a mentor, um, then feel free to either reach out to myself, um, the show, or even Matt if you want to. But that's another episode done. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye.